Hello. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I bless your name, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for my friends. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for those who are going to be turn, tuning in. Hi, Donna. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Marina. How are you? God bless you. Hi, 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 Donna. I miss you yesterday, I think. Hi, Trevor. God bless you. Hi, Lynn. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, yeah, today is a special day. And that's why I'm slightly late. Hi, Angela. God bless you. Uh, hi, Colin and Sandrine. God bless you. Um, today is a special day. Why? Because I went out today and uh, I celebrated with my wife. It's her birthday today. And um, we had a great time. We haven't been out for so long. You know, the lockdown and all of that. So, yeah, I, uh, we had a great time. And we're going to continue to have a great time after this. Um, yeah, it was good. It was great. Um, you need that time, especially in my life has been always very busy. Hi, Georgie. God bless you. Uh, life has been very, very busy sometimes, so it was just good to be away with my wife. And then, um, yes, absolutely. So, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, but I always have all of you in my mind. I always have the Word of God in my mind. I always have the commitment to serving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I know. Don't worry, sister. You can catch up. It's all on YouTube, by the way, anyway. What I'm, what I'm doing now, every time I do a live, if it was really powerful, I will download it and put it on YouTube. So if it disappears on Facebook, you can always catch up on YouTube. So yeah, um, like I said, yeah, I was happy to be with my wife today. Uh, we had a great time. Hi, Emily. God bless you. Hi, Fombi. God bless you. So today I wanted to talk about, I'm just going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for my friends. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for those who tune in tonight, first time, or who always been here. Father, I thank you so much for your support. May God bless you. These are the last days, so we have to have an insight. We always have to have an assessment. Otherwise, we're going to run things as usual. These are the last days. These are the last of the last days. So we have to make sure that we are measuring, assessing, checking things out. That we are always awake. That we are always on fire. That we are always rekindling the fire. Otherwise, it gets, you know, we become lukewarm and we don't know what to do and we keep doing the same old thing so i just want to, again the reason why i do all of this is to encourage my brothers and sisters okay to encourage all of you that these are the last days we cannot continue to procrastinate we can't continue to do the same thing as we always do and expect a different result okay hi dana god bless you so i want to thank you all for tuning in and today i want to talk about the difference between the early church and the church now. I believe it's important. And I might not even say anything new, but I just believe in these last days, we can't, we have to be able to assess the work that's being done. We have to be able to access the gospel that's being preached. We have to be able to assess the things that are being done in church so that we can have that measurement. Otherwise, it will continue to do the same thing. And I believe today, remember that when the church was born in the book of Acts, to be honest, the New Testament, the New Testament as we know it, starts in the book of Acts. Because the New Testament starts with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's when we inherit. That's when we enter the New Testament. But while Jesus was still here, 
preaching the gospel. He hadn't died yet. He hadn't, you know, fulfilled everything yet. But when he rose again, then things really started. Hallelujah. And that's when the church was born because he had to die and, and, and rise again. Now, um, what I want us to understand is that the church today, to be honest, my brothers and sisters, is very different from the church many years ago. Many years ago, when the church started, it was really, really very structural, simple. People were, if I should say, close to God, close to the apostles, close to the word. They were more in tune. Now, you can imagine how many years later. Hi, Karen. God, Karen Catherine, God bless you. You can imagine how many years, how far have we come to the initial church? Can we imagine how far we are now compared to the early church? So that's really what I wanted to talk about today. Like I said, it's not maybe I'm saying anything new, but I want us to realize that the church today is very different from how the church was before. I'm going to read the book of Acts. And I was saying the New Testament starts in the book of Acts. Because they see the, the people, the chosen people of God, the apostles started acting on the gospel. They started developing what the gospel was saying, what the four gospels that we have. These are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then now the acts of the apostle really, really are the beginning of the New Testament. This is where you see signs and wonders and the church is real high, Gael. God bless you, my sister. Thank you for joining in. This is where you really, really see the demonstration of what Jesus said, that greater works than this you will do. This is where the work of God was being demonstrated in the book of Acts. And that's why it's important for us to see. From Acts chapter 2, Peter preached. The gospel, and it was a simple, straightforward gospel. It was not intellectual, it was spirit-filled. That's the difference. Today, most pastors are life coaches. So I'm just going to do those comparisons as we go. I don't have a list in front of me. I don't have lists. I don't have notes. I don't have anything. I'm just going to go on all, all those comparisons because it's good for us to assess where we are so we can see the standard, okay? It's very important. So back then... The preaching of the gospel was direct and sharp. Peter preached a few words, but the Holy Spirit was empowering what he was speaking on. He didn't have to speak long like me. He spoke a few words. You crucified the Lord of glory. Repent and be baptized and be saved from this corrupt generation. It was as simple as that. 1,000 people got saved. I don't know how 1,000 people out of the thousands heard the message. Have you ever, <laughs> guys, have you ever thought about how 1,000 people got saved out of how many? There was no choir. There was no music. There was no speakers. There was, there was none of that. Have you ever thought about how on earth Peter spoke a short message and people got saved? My friends, we are so far. Today we have a church of 25 people. We have the sound system. We have microphones and everything. And honestly, I don't know how far we have fallen from the original initial church. So today most pastors are life coaches. Back then they were spirit filled. Okay, back then they preached the gospel. Yes, they were anointed, spirit filled. Back then they preached the gospel, Christ and Him crucified. Today we preach a different gospel. Okay, it was it, today we preach a different gospel, a gospel of inclusion, a gospel of prosperity. Today we preach a different kind of gospel, a self centered gospel, a me gospel, how God could make me better. God cannot make you better. 
God wants to eradicate you. God wants to take you out of the picture so he can reign and rule in your life. God don't want to arrange Adam. God don't want to arrange the flesh. God wants to replace you. God is not emotional like we are. He's not emotional driven. He's holiness driven. He's spirit driven. He's righteousness driven. He's godliness driven. Hallelujah. Shall I say that again? God is not emotional driven. He's not carnally driven. He's not fleshly driven. He's not friendly driven. Hallelujah. God is spirit driven. He's righteousness driven. He's faithfulness driven. He's love driven. He's not emotional driven. God wants to change you. He doesn't want to arrange you. He doesn't want to help you. No, he wants to take you out so he can work in you and through you for his pleasure, not for your pleasure. So in the, in the, in, in the early church, they had four things working for them. I'll read it for you. In the book of Acts chapter 2, Verse 40 says, and with many, many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Now, if the generation back in the days of Peter was perverse, how much more the generations of today is perverse? Times how many? How crafty, how arrogant, how proud, how, how our generation today, back then the generation was perverse. So Peter says, then those who, who received his word were baptized. And that day about, did I say 1,000? About 3,000. Okay. About 3,000 got saved. 3,000 people got saved. They didn't have a microphone. Peter didn't have anything. He didn't have, he spoke the word. He spoke the word. There is anointing and power over the who who speaks the word. Everybody is speaking words. Everybody say things. But he spoke the real word. The crucified Christ. He preached Christ and him crucified. You crucified the Lord of glory. We have a retreat this end of the week. In North Wales. And the theme is crucify me. 3,000 people got saved in one more, in one, in one few words. And they continued, and watch this, verse 42, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teachings. Number one. Number two, in fellowship. Number three, in breaking of the bread. Number four, in prayers. Jesus said, go preach and teach. He didn't say go and make followers. He said go and make disciples. Teaching, preaching and teaching. <sighs> My Lord, help us today. Help us today. They continue in four things. Teachings, breaking of the bread, fellowship, and communion. They went from house to house. Hallelujah. They went from house to house. 
The church was from house to house. Why? Because the priority was fellowship. Fellowship communion. It was family. The church was oriented in family. We call, they were called brothers and sisters in family. They was powerful in unity. Today we are divided. Today we are professionals. The church started with unity. They broke communion together. Every time, daily. Because there was unity, there was power. Because there was unity, there was the power of God and the anointing of God. Oh my goodness. The early church, of course, they had, they had the advantage because they were the, the apostles. But they were in one accord. To receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they, was in, they were in one accord, one mind. Today, you can't even get more than 10, 20 people without finding division and separation. How far are we from the principle of the early church? It was so simple. They kept things simple. There was no type of organization that we have today. They didn't trust in a government. They didn't beg from the government. They didn't follow government rules or anything they were alive in the spirit they were alive in the spirit the church today is completely different from yesterday church they relied on the holy spirit today we rely on the organization Today we hire professional. Today we hire, in fact, some churches hire worship leaders who are not even Christians. They met from house to house. They, they did four things. They break bread, communion. Because they had to have the cross the body of Christ broken, crucified for them. They had to remember that. And Jesus said, as often as you meet, remember me in these. Though so they had the cross in front of them. They weren't preaching stories. They weren't picking. Listen, the New Testament, the real church didn't have the Bible. The real church did not have the Bible. The beginning of the church didn't even have some of the letters of Paul. We have the full Bible. They relied on the Holy Spirit. They were in one accord. They rely on the Holy Spirit. Today we rely on the organization. We have plan B, we have plan C. They lived a life not their own. They had everything in common. Today we're so divided. There's no unity. There's no reality. There's no proper weakness. He said, you shall be my witnesses. How far have we fallen from the principle of the early church? I have a commentary on fellowship. It says, power of unity. This first detailed description of the early Christian is wonderful, is wonderfully revealing. The followers of Jesus who had been baptized by the Holy Spirit literally devoted themselves to communication and unity with God and with each other in relationship. They committed themselves, they committed together they were devoted to one another. They lived together. They shared in all things. The early church had things going for them. The fellowship was important for them. They needed to know who was who. They were together in one world, one unity, one faith, one baptism. They, were, they had everything in common. When there's such a unity, God will bless the church. God wouldn't bless when there's division and separation. Everything is broken. 
faces, they continued steadfastly in the apostle teachings, which is the word of God, and prayer in relationship to one another. They devoted themselves to fellowship and to breaking bread with one another as the word. Every time. Yes, Karen, they were powerful together. Why? Because they were unity. They didn't count their lives anymore. They didn't have any private lives anymore. They lived completely surrendered to Christ and to the apostles' teachings. There was no other way. And God began to move in a powerful way. You couldn't lie and get away with it. You couldn't cheat and get away with it. There were fear. The fear of God was there. Today, we don't tremble at the word of God. Today, we are wishy-washy at the word of God. God spoke. God speaks. And we neglect the word of God. We, we believe we believe. We don't, even believe we, we don't even know if we truly believe. So the young Christians don't see people who have an example who follow Christ properly. The young believers who come in, like my brother Georgie, my sister Donna, and many more, they don't see anybody who lived a life surrendered to Christ that they might see. There's no role models in Christianity today. I mean, I shouldn't say there's no. Let's say it's rare to see a role model in Christianity today, somebody who lived the life of Christ. So there's a lot of orphans in the body of Christ. There's a lot of fatherless in the body of Christ. There's a lot of widows in the body of Christ. Yes, my sister Gail, yes, we are not in the hour of the word of God. Oh, we just neglect it. So that's why there's no power People don't see those who live the Christian life today. Back then, they didn't have an agenda. There was no time for seminaries. Those who believed, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they went and did what God was telling them. They didn't have a Bible. They had to rely on the Holy Spirit. Today, we rely on our structure of the organization. And then the pastor comes and, and give you a nice story. It's not a book of stories. Well, there's some stories in it. But they are the illustration. Bring the word of God alive to the people. When you preach the word of God, it quickens people. It transforms people. You can't. This is not a book of nice little stories. That you. This is not about showing our knowledge of how we read the stories. Speak with the power of God. The man of God needs to hear from God and give a message of God to the people. Then the word becomes alive. That's why Peter can speak a few words and 3,000 get saved. He didn't need any, anything else. He didn't need a choir. He didn't need a band. He didn't need anything. When we come to total dependency of the Holy Spirit, I speak, guys, I'm speaking to myself as well. I'm not there yet. No, I'm not there yet, guys. I'm speaking to myself as well. When we come to the position that we will totally depend on God, we totally depend on the Holy Spirit. That's when the power will come. That's when we will demonstrate the spirit and power. But right now, we all have backup plans. If God don't come to pass, I will resort to this. If, God, if this don't happen, I will do to this. this, this. No, that's why because we still carnal, 
We believe in God, but we're still carnal. And because we're still carnal, guess what? The word is diluted, so it has no power. We programmed. Everything is programmed. <laughs> you don't have to believe me. Check it out. Yes, absolutely, Trevor. We have an advantage. We have the full Bible. Absolutely. But guess what? My brother Trevor, we will be more accountable because we have the full word. They didn't have revelation. They didn't have the last book. They only had the Old Testament. Yes, my sister girl, without that, we are just going to go around and around and around. You, why we have to live a crucified life that will help us that we say, Lord, I am sick and tired of not producing any fruits. I am sick and tired of going around from church to church. I am sick and tired. Transform me or I die. Transform me or I die. I am tired of people telling me little stories about Jesus. No, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I don't want to hear a little story about this. No. Give me Jesus. Give me the Holy Spirit. I want that. That's what I want. So you bless are those who hunger and thirst privately. Go into your room. Do whatever it takes. The disciples in the early church, they didn't have time. They were being persecuted all the time. They, were, they had to hide themselves. Give me Jesus or I die. Period. This is not the time for us to have a little program, okay? We're going to have five songs, this and that, announcement, a message is 25 minutes, and then we go, and then, no, and then you wait for, no, 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 no. We need to tear everything apart. We need to stop our programs and feed the people with the word of God. True worshippers don't need anything. But the Holy Spirit. Speak the word of God to your people. Period. Guys. We are being bombarded. 24-7. We are being bombarded by the world. 24-7. They are speaking to our lives through advertisement. Billboard. Tele. The word is always speaking to us. And you telling me you're going to wait only on Sunday to hear from God? You think that's enough? You can't wait. Get hungry for the Holy Spirit. The people in the, in the early church, they had the Holy Spirit and that was it. They didn't travel with any books. Their lives had to bear witness. They were living epistles of God. Today we are life coaches. We preach people happy because we want them to come back next Sunday. Now, a true child of God don't need to be organized. He doesn't need to be programmed. He hears from God and does what God asks him to do. It's a daily work. It's a daily work. Absolutely, Karen. A true child of God don't wait for Sunday. A true child of God must be so hungry for God that every day that he lives, he needs to be in the spirit of God so that he can live effectively. If when you live in the spirit, that's when you will be able to navigate. You will see the things of life as nothing. You got to live in the spirit. The Bible says, if you are being born of the spirit, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. But you can't go in and out, in and out, in and out. Today you feel high and then tomorrow you feel low. It's not going to work. The early, the early church, they had to be alive every day. Persecution was following them every day. Yes, it's a blessing. The word of God has the power to transform. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. That's all I need. If you can't give me Jesus... Go, let me go.
Hallelujah. You need Christ crucified. No more pampering. No more friendly gospel. The early church didn't have any friendly gospel. They couldn't even be popular. But the more they were persecuted, the more the church grew. Twelve people turned the world upside down. Today, there's a two to three billion Christians and the world is going the wrong way. Why? Because we have diluted the word of God. We have turned Christianity into an organization. The early church didn't have an organization. They didn't have a charity number either. They had nothing to do with the government or the local council. They had nothing because we are children of a different kingdom. The kingdom of God. Nothing to do with this earth. Hallelujah. There's too much of this. We need to get to the point that you need to get the kingdom. You need to be in the kingdom and walk in the kingdom. We are not of this world. We don't need to please people. In this world, we have audience God is our, the one that we need to please. To please God, we need to obey his word. To please God, we need to walk in his word. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, sister. We don't need to expect the Holy Spirit, Catherine. And he, and he needs us to be obedient and pray. Tell Max that he's so right. And to confirm what he just said, Sister Catherine. Tell him that Acts chapter 5 verse 32 confirm what he just said. Acts chapter 5 verse 32. God has given the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. Tell him that, my sister. God bless him. Yes, out of the, the mouth of babies, the gospel will be perfected. Will be pre I'm telling you, these times, God will speak to those who are willing to hear. God will speak to those who are willing to obey. The early church was obedient. We are not obedient. We procrastinate. We're lazy. People don't even have time to read the Bible. Nothing. You have the word. We have the Bible in the palm of our hands, in our phones and everything. We don't read. We're too busy. Guys, like I said, I am in it. Pray for me. Let's pray for one another. But this is no time for procrastination. We need to have a standard. The reason I'm talking about the early church and the, the, the church today is because the early church was close to Christ. So they had the advantage that they, they saw the apostle who touched Christ, who was with Christ. Yes, I agree. But they didn't have the Bible. But they had to rely on the Holy Spirit. They, they, they died to self. Their lives was completely surrendered to God. They lived together. They had church daily. They met daily and broke communion daily so they remember the cross and then they prayed daily because prayer was the battle prayer is the battle in spiritual warfare prayer is the battle in spiritual warfare you dress up with christ and prayer is the battle that's the key to spiritual warfare yes catherine i know you can hear me because i'm shouting Hallelujah. Guys, I just want to thank God. We need to wake up. We can't continue to do things the same way. Tell your friends, tell whoever you need to speak to every day. Wake up to the word. Eat the word. Sleep the word. Do whatever it takes. In the early church, they had to listen to the apostles. And the apostles, remember, they were illiterate people. They couldn't even write until the Holy Spirit had to inspire them to write. Today, people write books. Many books. People don't even read them. People read more books, but they can't even read the 66 books in this book.
Guys, people gave their lives to give us the word. We need to respect the written word of God so that God can see if he can empower us. Yes, there's, it takes everything. Whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes. It takes everything. Yes. It takes your mind. It takes your strength. It takes your breath. It takes everything. It takes everything. It's going to take everything. And then we need to share. We need to extend our lives to people. Don't get comfortable. Some people, you can't call them after 10 o'clock. Your life don't belong to you anymore. The early church understood it. So they sold all the extra stuff they had. They gave them to the apostle to use it for the poor churches. Everybody had everything in common. So nobody lacked anything. Today we're selfish, self-centered. It's me, gospel. Jesus bless me or I die. Jesus bless me, bless me, bless me. I know you've been to the cross already. I know you were crucified. You were beaten. You were deformed. People spat on you. Blood was pouring out everywhere. You dropped sweats of blood. You know, you, you, you cried out. You, you, you did everything for me. But it's not enough. I still want you to bless me with... Uh, uh. Hallelujah. 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 Our lives don't belong to us anymore. Today, I had a great time with my wife. It was her, it's her birthday today. When I finish, we're going to continue to share. We had a great day, spent a great time together. We hadn't had a, we haven't been out for a long time. It was good to be with her. We, she's a blessing to my life. She's the balance in my life. I love her. Even when I do this, she knows I have to do it. She knows. We share in all things. Our lives are not ours anymore. You can read it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, 13, 14. For Christ died so we don't live our lives anymore. Christ died so we don't live our lives anymore. That we live for him who died for us. When we begin to understand that. Then nothing will stop you from preaching the gospel. Nothing will stop you from sharing your life with one another. Remember the four things. That we need to practice every time we meet. I have a friend of mine. He's called Jeff. Every time we meet. Every week. We share communion. If you struggle in your life, break communion. Even with yourself, break communion. The Holy Spirit is with you. With your wife, the children, break communion. I did it yesterday. Keep doing it. It's an encouragement. It doesn't have to be a private thing. It's a communion thing you commune together you are together break communion if you sin today break communion if you sin yesterday break communion not because you're perfect yes total obedience to god we sin because we are sinners but communion will remind you of the cross the cross and it will bring the fear of god in you in, in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 43, it says, Now I read verse 42 first. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and prayers. Verse 43, Acts chapter 2, verse 43. Then fear came upon every soul. 
and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Verse 44. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. All who believed were together and had all things in common. What the, what's the opposite of today? Today, everybody's individual. Selfish, self-centered. It's all about me. It's all about blessing me. The gospel is, a, is, a, is an inward, selfish gospel. It's a social gospel. It's a compromised gospel. It's a prosperity gospel, which is a devil's gospel. Fear came upon the people because they saw the Holy Spirit at work. We don't see the Holy Spirit at work. If the Holy Spirit leaves most churches, nobody will notice that the Holy Spirit is gone. Nobody. Nobody. I mean, I shouldn't say nobody. Few people will notice. If the Holy Spirit leaves people, they wouldn't even know. Because you got to walk with him. You got to do things with him. When you walk with the Holy Spirit, you will know. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will know. Quickly. You got to be sensitive. You have to develop the sensitivity with the Holy Spirit. Every time you complain, you moan and this and that. Trust me, the Holy Spirit will not like it. You grieve the Holy Spirit and it goes silent. But when you praise, when you worship and adore him, when you tell, you tell him how amazing, awesome he is, it's like you become like a cheerleader. When you cheer the Holy Spirit, when you cheer God up, when you turn your complaints into prayers, when you turn your joy, your mourning into joy, when you begin to praise him through the pain, through the struggle, you're cheering God up. He goes and fight your battle. He goes and do what you cannot do for yourself. When you begin to praise God all the time, he begins to fight your battles for you. For his glory. Many places. Take the Holy Spirit away. Nobody knows. So we have to develop the sensitivity. We have to understand the workings of the Spirit. The early church knew the power of the Spirit. The early church knew when the Holy Spirit was working. Today church... My prayer, my prayer, guys. Develop a sensitivity with the Holy Spirit. Turn your complaints into prayers. Learn to speak with the Holy Spirit. Read the word. The more you read the word, the more he stores up the word in you. It's not, it's, he wrote the word. He wants you to cooperate with him. Remember, the old the early church didn't have the word written down like this. They had the scroll of the Old Testament. And the, the disciples couldn't even read. They were illiterate. But they had to depend totally on the Holy Spirit. That's one of the major differences. The Old Testament church, the, the, no, the, 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 the New Testament church, at the opening of the church, they relied fully on the Holy Spirit. Today, we have intellectual Christians. We have PhDs Christians. It's not working. There's more Christians today than before. But I can't even change all of them, what I am. Twelve people turned the world upside down. Two billion Christians in the world can't even turn one city upside down. What happened? What happened? Think about it. How many tongue speaking healers, prophets today? Billions. We can't even change one country. But 12 disciples turned the world upside down. 
Because they depended on the Holy Spirit. Because they continue on the four things. They continue in teachings. How often do you do teachings? How often do you exegete the word of God? How often do you go beyond what is written that you read and you, 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 you take time to go deep in the word? How many times, how often do you do that? They continue in the teachings of the apostles, in breaking the bread, in fellowship. How often do you meet with your brothers and sisters? How often do you pray? They continue with prayers. They prayed. They prayed. You see, prayer works when the heart is right with God. Prayer works when there's unity of mind and a common vision of the spirit. Prayer works when our wills are surrounded to the will of God. Because God wants to bring his will on earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He is relying on you when you pray. He wants his will to be on earth as in heaven. He wants his will to be functioning in you. So when you pray, you're praying God's will. You're not praying your will. You're not praying your problems. You're not praying your issues. He knows your issues. Matthew chapter 6. He knows what you want to ask him before you ask. Matthew chapter 6 verse 32. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So when you pray, you're not praying your issues. You pray his will to be done no matter what. Now incidentally, maybe you'll benefit from that. Because Jesus said, if you lift my name up, if you exalt my name, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father. But right now, the early church, they prospered spiritually. They didn't prosper materially. They didn't. They knew they were passing through. They knew this earth, they, that time was not their time. They knew they're going to be persecuted anytime soon. They knew, so they had a conscience. Their conscience was always alert to what God is saying. They had to be sharp in the spirit. They couldn't mess about. They could not procrastinate. They knew the time was short. Nearly 2,000 years ago. Today we, have, we are comfortable. Today we have no urgency to preach the gospel. You guys don't know how many people have attacked. I mean, I don't really care. But you guys don't know how many people have attacked me in one way or another. They said I'm going to burn out. People said to me, I'm too much. I'm showing off. People said, people said all kinds of things to me. Just because I want to talk about Jesus. We are being bombarded with the world 24-7. But somebody speaking about Jesus for one hour, people think it's too much. It's too much. People tell me, Joseph, you're too much. X, X, X. I feel very sad. I'm thinking, these are people who consume the world 24-7. But they can't stand the gospel for one hour. Out of 24 hours, they can't stand. It proves to me that probably don't even read the word. These are the times that we need to feel the urgency of preaching the gospel. And I will, if, if it was up to me, by the grace of God, everybody should be doing this different, different hours of the day. Now, every time somebody goes on the internet, you will find a Christian preaching the gospel. They will have no excuses. This is, this is about God and his kingdom. This is about preaching the gospel by any means necessary. Any godly means. This is about time we need to multiply. We need to duplicate. We need to do whatever it takes to preach the gospel.
My goodness. The early church had the urgency in front of them. That's why they had to break communion all the time. Like I said that before, if you're struggling in your life, communion is a very powerful thing to do. Because communion, at the table of communion, when you bring the elements of communion, unleavened bread and the, and the cup, we'll, we'll teach on it another time. Whenever you break communion, there's a spirit of humility that comes upon you this is when you picture your Lord and Savior on the cross. The more you break communion, this is the best thing that can ever remind you of the death of Christ on the cross and the resurrection. I'm telling you, the more you break communion, the more you share communion, do it with two of you, do it with, if, if you by yourself. If you're struggling, let's say you have issues, you have, you have problems in your life. Break communion with the Holy Spirit and the angels that are with you. Turn your complaints to God in prayer. Break communion. It will silence everything. You will see the magnified of Christ, you will see, you will magnify Christ in your life. The more you do it, my brother, the more you don't, you're not doing it because you are worthy. You do it because Jesus is worthy. Don't run away from communion. The early church knew the power that was in it. They knew they had to do it on a regular basis. They were listening to the apostle on a regular basis. And what happened? As they fellowship, they were sharpening each other, sharpening each other. Guess what happened? Prayer was just natural to them. They had to pray for everything. They abandoned everything. They left their jobs. They just began to spread the message. Secretly, publicly, wherever they could, they would share the message. They had the sense of preaching the gospel like no other time. Twelve people turned the world upside down. Why? Because they multiplied. The Holy Spirit multiplied to the 12 to 24 and on and on. They were multiplied. So they spoke the same thing because the same Holy Spirit was working. Because they dedicated their lives. They live together, so they, they rub off with one another. Hallelujah. They rub off with one another. Be careful who you walk with. Be careful who you run with. It will rub off you. Because they were together, they were sharpening each other. The Holy Spirit was working with them. And the thing that kept them humble, the, keep, the thing that kept them in the fear of God, is when they had to break the bread. Because Christ just been crucified in those days. And they knew the persecution. They knew what has happened. When you break communion, it brings a humility that you can never even think about. And the Holy Spirit is glorified. Because Jesus died in the Holy Spirit. He rose up in the Holy Spirit. He was ascended. In the Holy Spirit. Hmm. 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 Hallelujah. I repeat that. When you break communion. You're giving a stage. For the Holy Spirit. You are allowing the Holy Spirit. To explain to you the cross. To bring the cross alive to you. And that vision will keep you humble. And when you're humble, then God can speak to you. Then the word of God can come alive to you. That's why they can spread the gospel because they had the fear of God. They knew what has happened and they had to preach only Christ and him crucified. They didn't have an intellectual knowledge about the gospel. Today we learn. People read us stories. To try and make sense of the gospel. People tell us nice little stories. And then they, no. Give me Jesus. Tell me about him crucified. Tell him about dying and, ra and, 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 and rising again. Tell me about 
the effect of that in my life. That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. That's what you and I, that's what we need to know. So the early church, of course they had problems. The more they grew, as soon as they start, grow, they start growing, they start having problems. Corinthians had problems, you know. Galatians had, the, Galat, the church in Galat had problems. Church in Corinth had problems. Very, very sad problems. The church, the Philippian church was good. But bottom line, as they start growing, false preachers and false people came in and they began to sow or uh, preach other gospels. Now, the reason why I mention it is if it happened in that, those times with Paul, how much more now? How much more now? How many false preachers we have? How many false pastors we have? How many false apostles we have? How many now? If it happened then, how much more now? So you guys can see what I'm trying to say. This is about a personal individual walk with the Holy Spirit. In a way, I am so sorry. It doesn't matter what. We will have no excuses. I will have no excuses that I can't read. That I can't. No. Today you can listen to the word if you can't read. Even if you're blind, you can still read today. We have no more excuses. Because the more you know, the more you will be accountable for. I repeat that. The more you know, the more you will be accountable. Yes. And now we know the full book. So we're going to be accountable. We are a generation who will be accountable much more. So my brother, my sisters, let's get on fire. Let's get excited about the gospel. This is personal. Let's do it. Let's do things like we never done before. Let's do it. Let's communicate to one another. Let's talk to one another. Let's share it with one another. Let's break communion together. Let's do go deeper in the word of God together. Bible studies. Let's develop Bible studies together. Let's do whatever it takes together. Don't depend on anybody but the Holy Spirit. Depend on nobody else but the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you today. I want to thank you for bearing with me. I want to thank you for listening. I love you guys. You know that. That's what the Holy Spirit wants me to speak about today. We are all on a journey. We are all being perfected. But the mistakes, we need to examine ourselves. We need to assess where we are with the Lord. We need to constantly do it. But not for condemnation, for conviction so we can be transformed. This is no time to procrastinate. This is no time to play the ignorant. Because we have the word everywhere. This is a time for us to seek God. This is time for us to seek what God is saying now. Now. These are the last of the last days. We keep saying that. Jesus is coming. We keep saying that. But are we ready? Are we ready? So let's pray for one another. Let's sharpen one another. Let's help one another to grow. And let's love one another. In Jesus' name, I thank you for staying with me until the end. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs>